ought to be so, as I said earlier, so desensitized. See, we make it feel it's cool not to have no feelings. I'm a man. I, I ain't gonna cry. I ain't gonna be with a, I ain't no punk. And that's the reason why now you got young men growing up doing things that they never thought they would ever do. Because they feel I can't show any emotions. So instead of showing the emotion and letting it come out, I told you before, God allowed me, us to have tears as a pressure cooker. As allow some of sometimes if you'd have just cried that thing out. But you know what you have been trained? You don't cry, you a punk. You wouldn't got a gun. You wouldn't got a baseball bat. You wouldn't got some things and you did some things and you made sure that you were gonna let the emotion go some kind of way. We did the broadcast yesterday and I ended on a story that got my attention. I got, it got my attention and I was in the street or the city called Madrid. There was a father and his son and the son's name was Paco. And Paco is a familiar name in Madrid. A lot of kids named Paco. There's a Paco on every block. And the father and Paco got into an argument. And the father kicked Paco out the house. And you know, it was one of them arguments. Sometimes we get in an argument, you know, okay, I'll be back next week. You know, I need some money, Dad. Okay, okay. you know you ain't no good, but I'm you still my son. But this argument, Paco left the place that he was in and went to another country. And, 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 and the father, at least he thought he did, because he hadn't seen his son in so many years. And you know, it's something about a father. It's something about a father that really loves his children, that has his children. He might be mad for a while, but there's something about, I'm going to find my son. And he didn't know how to find him, so what he did, he went to the local newspaper, and he put out an ad. He paid a small fortune, and he put the ad on the front, the headlines of the newspaper. Paco, come home. All is forgiven, dad. And I'm going to meet you. At the newspaper, at, at the newspaper office at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And on nine o'clock that next day, they had to have the police for the traffic jam. Because men were all out in the streets. Men were all out in the way because all the men that were named Paco, whose father had, had arrived with their father and been kicked out of the house and wanted their father's forgiveness was there. There was a singer by the name of Johnny Paycheck, and his real name was Eugene Little. And Eugene Little could never get a hit to save his life. So he went and started, he got with the songwriter, and they said, well, would you sing this song for me? And the song was, take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. My woman done gone and left me. And took everything I've been working for. So just take this job and shove it. And when this song came out, it was supposed to have been a song about a man that was going through a bad relationship. But do you not know that became the anthem for every dissatisfied person? Every person that felt like I'm tired of the situation I'm in. I'm tired of what I'm going through. I'm tired of where I'm at. And they made a determination that they began to sing that song. And every time you hear that song, people would just sing that song. When they got tired of working, they wouldn't quit their job. But they would just say, take this job and shove it. And the Lord, and again, I have to refer back to what he told me. He said, we've got to get our men in a place where they love what they're called to do. God is giving us as another chance. You know, I'm not here to beat the men up because I thank God for the men. See, it's a, it's a catch-22. I'm speaking to men now that are with their families. I'm speaking to men now that are standing up and being real men. I'm speaking to men now that are here and they're not playing games and they're doing what they got to do. They could have left a long time ago. I'm speaking to men that if the wives be honest and truthful and didn't nobody, you know, wasn't nobody around, they say, I got a good husband. Every one of us got some issues. Every one of us got problems. Matter of fact, some wives in here got some issues and some problems. I didn't want to tell y'all that because I got, a, I got a wife. <laughs> but every one of us, oh Lord, have mercy. But every one of us got some kind of issue. You know, sometimes, and, 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 and it took, you know, can't nobody live with you. You know, you know, your husband, the only one that can live. You might think you all that, and you know, I got it together. <laughs> but you know, if we was to really go home with you, and you know, some women, I don't know what it is about some women. So, I'm trying to help the men. <laughs> we got some women in here that think they men, so I'm trying to help the world. 
And you know what? Some folks will go home. It's something about the nature of a, a woman, man. I mean, I'm, they, they want to always, you know, every now and then, they're going to try you. They're going to test you. See if you... They said, you know, in, in the lions, in the, the family of lions, they say when a lion, every now and then the, the headline, they call with the lions when they get together, they call it the pride. And every now and then the headline, which is the father, the male lion, will lay, line all his sons, all his male lions up, and you just go down the line and swipe at them. And you'll swipe at them just to see if they're going to raise up. And, the one, and, and they're all, if they got any sense, they'll, mm. and that one, mm, he knows I got to get rid of you now. <laughs> we got some women today. Every now and then, your little sweet angel babe, your little sugar crump, your crumb crop, your, your, your sweet candy baby, she get that look in her eye. I just want to test you. And you'll be walking along and they'll bring up an argument about something. Didn't that happen 12 years ago? Yeah, but I just ain't got it out of my system. How are we going to get this thing straight? You don't even remember what you're arguing about. You say, Lord, have mercy. You know, oh, Lord. <laughs> I knew this day was going to come. It's confession time in the church. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We got to tell it like it is. We got some women that I'm trying to help the men, baby. Baby, just hold on. I'm going to get back to the men. <laughs> You wonderful men. You special men. I know God, the Lord loves you for what you've been putting up with. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, we got some men that God is going to elevate to the next level. That's going to set us. But the number one thing that you've got to realize, you know, uh, I heard Franklin Jensen, he preached a message. And I don't know what he, you know, and I haven't been, see, usually on Sunday mornings I watch TBN and I, and, 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 and so I used to like, oh, I can't preach that because you can't preach that. But anyway, uh, Franklin Jensen some years back preached a message about a father. And I'm going to tell you the truth and lie not, you know, every once in a while you can go into the word of God and you, that, you can read this Bible 20 years straight every day. And there's some things you will overlook and miss. And I, when he preached that message about the father, he said, there was a father, and I can't remember the name, and I've been looking for the scripture, can't find it to save my life. I'm going to go back in some more research, but I haven't been able to find it. But the thing that he preached about this father, he had such an influence on his children. That when his children, they said, not only did his children's generation serve the Lord, he said, but for 150 years, every generation that came out of the loins of him and his sons, they walked upright, and every generation gave homage and honor and gave respect to the father that walked upright before God. You know, a child's number one nature, if he's really a child, especially a male child, and you're a male, they want to be somewhat like daddy. They want to walk like daddy. They want to talk like daddy. Now, they, they, you know, they're going to get up and develop their own flavor. They're going to develop their own way of doing things. But the average child, when that daddy, if the daddy walk like this, that child, you may, he may not be, you, you ain't never checked him and called him, but when you ain't around, he trying to. <laughs> One father said he came in, he saw his son. He, you know, the father wore glasses and had a, you know, went to work every day with a big old briefcase. He said he walked in one day and the son had on his father's glasses and that briefcase could hardly pick it up. And the father didn't, you know, now some father, boy, what you doing? Them glasses cost $500. What you doing with what you mess with my briefcase for? You know, I got better. But you know what that father did? He just went back, to, stood back and went to smiling. He said, because my son, he sees qualities in me that he wants in him. I'm asking every father today, because I know we've got so many special things planned in the next few minutes. But I'm asking every father today, let's pick up our pace. Let's up the ante. Let's make the game a little bit more exciting. Let's make the game a little, put a little bit more in the game. And we can get a little bit more out there.